In this video, we are going to go over three questions I've seen asked over the last few days. Uh, the first question is, how do I turn on these vertical lines in Notepad++? Uh, when you're modifying a bulk data entry for Nastran, sometimes it's helpful to see these vertical lines. These tell you where the fields in the bulk data entries start and end. So I'll show you how to turn that on in Notepad++. A second question, how do I create a plot for element force in a SOL 400 transient analysis? So in this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through how to create a plot like this. Here we have the axial force for the rod elements displayed across time. And the third question, how, where can I find a pattern tutorial for optimization? So I'll tell you exactly where to find that tutorial. So let's go ahead and get started with the first question. How do I turn on these vertical lines? So these vertical lines are turned on like this. Go to settings, preferences, here on the left, go down until you go to margins, border, and edge. Here in this middle section, this is where you can specify where exactly to place the line. So let me go ahead and cut this. So right now, if you look at the screen, there's nothing. So you want to type in uh, numbers in integer or in increments of eight. So remember, uh, national bulk data entries are typically defined in increments of eight. So here, 8, 16, 24, 32, and so on and so on. And if we look here at Notepad, I have those vertical lines now listed. And you want to go until a 180, I believe it was. So let's go ahead and paste all those other values from before. So here, increments of 8 up to 80. So at most, we have 10 fields here. And now you might be interested in changing the color. How do you change the color? Go to settings, style configurator. Here on the left-hand side, click on global styles and go down to edge color. Here, maybe you want to make it blue. So now your vertical lines are blue. And here you can see that my bulk data entries are divided uh, uh, between these lines. Now let me go ahead and change this back to my personal color, uh, light gray. Now. Uh, if you're asking this, you're most likely new to NAS Trans, so this is a good time to mention one very important thing when it comes to bulk data entries. Uh, let me go ahead and revert one setting here. When you're modifying your national bulk data entry, sometimes you'll find an entry that's kind of modified in an odd way. Here, I've defined one node for NAS Trans, and you see that here, these two formats look different, but Nastran will look at this these two entries and will see them as the same definition. To us, they look like two different definitions, but to Nastran, they're, they're the same. What's going on here? Let me go ahead and define this entry again. So here, grid 101, 0, 1 1.0, 1 1.0, 0, 1.0. So here I've defined one node 101 the id at a uh, reference coordinate system zero at x equals z one and y equals one and z equals zero you might be asking yourself what's going on how come this is not being split between the lines if you go to view show symbol show all characters this will show you all the hidden characters in your text file when I was in school, I did not know about these hidden characters. When we turn on these hidden characters, we see the tab characters that are identified with these arrow symbols. When you press the tab key, it's automatically inserting these tab characters. And this might throw you off if you're a new user. My recommendation is this. Turn off tab characters. Use spaces instead. You, you go back to settings, preferences, language, here on the right hand side, turn on this checkbox, replace by space. So anytime you press the tab key, it replaces the tab key with four spaces that you have defined here. So let's go ahead and repeat this. Grid 101, 0, 1.0, 1.0, and 0, 0.0. Let's turn off all the characters. And now this is more of something that I want. I never want to use tab characters. That is very confusing if you're new to Nastran. So here I've defined them. And now any entry that I define 
it's going to be use spaces instead of tab characters. So here, that's what I'm doing. So that's one thing I wanted to point out. Use spaces all the time. Do not use tab characters because it will confuse you. Now let's go back here and answer the second question. Now the second question is asking a few things. Uh, if I'm working with failure indices, how do I plot that? Uh, but then the question is asking, uh, how do I do this for homogeneous elements? Uh, failure indices are typically a reference to composite plies. Uh, here, I'm not going to show you how to plot the failure indices for composite plies. I'm going to show you how to plot the element forces for homogeneous elements. So how do we do that when we're working with SO400? So here on my desktop, I have a bulk data file. If you look here at line 4, it's currently configured for SO400. If I look at line 20, it's currently configured to perform a transient analysis because here it says analysis equals nonlinear transient. Okay, now, so how do we output the element forces? All you need to do is the following. Do force equals all. Now, this might generate a lot, a lot of data in the F06 file, so what you can do is the following. You can just say plot. Just output the data to the results file, so xdb, op2, or h5. Um, if you want to output the data to the F06 file, you can say print all. Now, if you want to limit the amount of data to the F06 file, you can do the following. Right now, it's configured to output all the data for all the elements. So here I have element equals all. What you can do is the following. You can say, hey, you know what? I'll put the data only for a few elements, elements 11 and 111. Here, take this identifier 3 and put it here in uh, force. So force, print, 3, only output the element forces for elements 11 and 111. So now when I run Nastran, let's go ahead and try this out. Whenever you're new to Nastran, uh, it's always a good idea to look at the F06 file and search the file for any user fatal messages, so user fatal. So user fatal is a reference to an error message. Here I've searched the whole file and it's telling me that there's zero, zero errors, which is good. So let's go ahead and scroll down here and let's look at the data we get. Here we get a table for the displacements, the displacements, the accelerations, and the uh, single point forces. Here, let me turn that off for the next one. So here, I'm going to press Control Alt on the keyboard, and while I'm holding Control Alt, I'm going to comment all of these entries. So Nashran is going to ignore the commented commands. Alternatively, you can just delete those commands, and it's the same thing. But here, I've just commented them. So the next time I run Nastran, it's going to not output these quantities. Now, if I look through this file, you'll notice that I do not get the element forces. They're actually not output. Um, upon investigation, I looked at the quick reference guide for Nastran. I looked at the force case control command that controls the element output. Um, Usually it's a good idea to read through the remarks because this tells you what's supported in that case control command or bulk data entries. Here, if you go through all the remarks, you find remark number six. Here, let's go ahead and read it out loud. In SOL 400 with analysis equals NL tran, element force output for C weld, C fast elements is available. So here we're saying that, hey, there is a statement about what elements you can output the element forces for. And then we read on and it says the following. All other elements capable of force outputs, such as C beam, C quad 4, would not produce nonlinear transient force output. So initially I thought, okay, you cannot output the element forces for solution 400 when you're performing a transient analysis. But then I found that there is a way to output the element forces, but you have to compromise. If we look here at this uh, bulk data entry, there is this parameter, param lg disp. So this turns on large displacement support for the elements. This is what prevents the output of the element forces. Now, if you turn this off, if you remove the large displacement capability from your bulk data file and your elements, if you compromise, 
If you remove this capability, save with negative one, that turns off large displacement. You can comment the entry or you can remove the entry altogether. But here we're commenting entries today, so I'll just leave uh, the commented character here, the dollar sign. So when you remove the large displacement capability, then you can output the element forces. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So again, we're compromising. We really want to see the element forces. So we have to turn off the large displacements. And if we look at the uh, F06 file, again, it's always a good idea to look for any user fatal messages. We want to make sure there are no errors. And here I see that there are no errors. So now let's go ahead and look at the data. So a few things. Number one, you'll find that there's no more displacement acceleration or velocity data. That's because we commented or we, we, we removed that data. The next thing, now I get these tables for the forces and the rod elements. So here, this first uh, table, this is going to be for element ID. I get what the time increment is. I get told what the axial force is and so on and so on. So now that we have this data, how do we output this data for plotting? So here, let's go ahead and make another modification. You want to output the newer file, the H5 file. This file is more flexible to work with. If you're working with the XDB, a master DBL, or OP2, I think it's time to upgrade to the newer file, the H5 file. Here, if you look at the desktop now, I have an H5 file available. As always, let's go ahead and make sure there are no user fatal messages and things look okay here. There are no errors, so now I can carry on. There, there's one web app you can use to create your plot. Here, it's available on the Soul 200 web app. If you go here and click on the HD5 Explorer, you can upload the H5 file and create your plots. Now, these tools that you see today, the HD5 Explorer and the viewer, they are free to use as long as you are an MSC Nastran user. So here, what I'm going to do in the HD5 Explorer is create my plot. In the viewer, I'm going to import the finite element model for this example. So here, I've selected the bulk data file, and then I've clicked Upload Files. Let's go ahead and turn on maybe the cross-section for my rod elements. Let's turn off the wireframe and the cross-section. Let's go ahead and display the element IDs for this example, and let's maybe turn on the node IDs. Now, this is a test file. There are actually two elements overlapping each other. Here, I see that I have elements 11 and 111. So what I'm going to do here in the web app, I'm going to go ahead and select this data set, element force rod. This data set contains all the element forces here, I see that I have the element forces for 111 and 11. Now, here you can specify which specific elements to output data for. So maybe you want to output data for only element 11. So here I type in 11 and acquire data set. And then here I have new data in this table. I can go ahead and click on create plot here in the top right hand corner. And then if I click last plot, add it, I now have a plot of the axial force across time. But here we want to look at the data for multiple elements. So here I'm going to specify get data for element 11 and 111. I'm going to click on acquire data set. Once I have the data acquired, I'm going to click on create plot. And then here on last plot, add it at the top. Once it starts blinking, click that link and I get taken to where the new plot has been created. Here I have uh, a few different plots, if you will. Uh, one plot is for element 11, and then the second plot is for element 111. Now you can see that the plot is actually split here in the middle. What's going on here? If you look at the original bulk data file, the transient analysis is actually done in two parts. Here, here for step 100, it's performing the first part of the transient analysis. The transient analysis stops, and then a second transient analysis with step 200 is uh, started. So what's going on here is that after the first transient analysis, 
the results from the first transient analysis are automatically carried over to the second transient analysis. So what you see here is the first transient analysis happen and then it stops. The results are automatically carried over to the second transient analysis and then it continues on like before. So here in the plot, there are a few other things you can do. You can move the plot up and down. You can move it uh, left and right. You can zoom in and out if you want. Uh, you can take a screenshot of this if you want. So here on the top right hand corner, you can uh, download an image of this plot. Here on the right, we have a legend for you. So you can turn on what specifically you want to display. And now say you want to take this data to an Excel program. Here on the bottom left, click on View Filters and Plotted Values. Here if you wanted to, you can turn on what the maximum and minimum values are for the plot. Or you can click on Download CSV. And this will download a table for you to use in Excel. So here, let's go ahead and see if we can do this real quick. Let's see if we can create a plot. So here, by using the HD5 Explorer, I did create my plot. But if for some reason you want to take this to Excel, you can do that quickly by downloading a CSV file. And you can see that I have the same plots here that as, I, as I do here in the HDF5 Explorer. Okay then, so again, the HDF5 Explorer and the Viewer are both free as long as you're an MSC NASTRAN user. And then let's go ahead and take a look at the last question for today. Is there a pattern tutorial that tells me how to set up optimization, say I want to minimize the mass and constrain the first natural frequency. Now, when you're a student, you're a researcher or a professional engineer, some of the tools you're going to be using have been developed over the last one or two years or were developed 30 years ago. Some of these tools were developed maybe in the 1990s. Some of these tools were developed maybe in the early 2000s. So, the recommendation I'm going to be recommending or making today rather is the following. Use something a lot newer because the difference could be you would have to spend maybe two days trying to set up a simple optimization or you could be spending maybe two, five or ten minutes. Here the web app is one such tool where you can set that optimization in maybe five or ten minutes. Other tools, you might be there one or two hours trying to figure out where to click and how to set it up. So if you go to the website, theengineeringlab.com, you go to the tutorial section and you go down to this example, vibration of a cantilever beam. You, you click on the second column. This will take you to a tutorial that does that. It does what's asked in the question. Here, they want a tutorial where they want to minimize the mass but constrain the first natural frequency. If you look here in this example, that's exactly what's done. Here I have this cantilever beam with some shear panels and some stiffeners here at the top and right. I want to minimize the mass and I want to constrain the natural frequency to be greater than 20 hertz. This walks you through every step that you need to do. How do you create your variables? How do you upload your bulk data file? How do you create the objective? How do you create the constraint on the first natural frequency? How do you look at the results? How do you look at the change in the variables? And then I believe, how far do we go? Right, and then at the very end, we show you what the final and initial natural frequencies are. Uh, we show you how to verify the results. Again, this tutorial takes about 10 minutes to go through. This, in my opinion, is a lot better than other tutorials and other programs where you're going to be spending maybe one or two hours. Um, so there's that question. And then to end off this video, um, if you have a simple question, if it's a question that I can address in maybe one or two minutes, uh, feel free to send that email uh, or that question to me at this email address. Uh, if it's something that's very easy to do, I'll go ahead and make a video so everyone else can benefit from the question. So as always, uh, thank you so much for watching these videos and I'll stop here.